Isn't it always nice when you've taken this beautifully composed portrait mode shot on your iPhone and you go to check it and it just didn't work out as expected. And no matter where you tap the focus on the screen, the iPhone will not come to the party. What is up? My name is Pierce Dillon, and in this video, we're going through a little beginner Photoshop tutorial and possibly even showing you a couple of features that you didn't know existed on the iPhone. So, if we go into the portrait mode photo example, you can see there's a couple of problems with this photo being the bottom of the can is actually missing, which is no good, as well as the sides of the can aren't very sharp, and then the obvious problem being the background between my fingers is missing all of that bokeh. So, this is a good example to work on. Now, the best part about these portrait mode photos is the iPhone will actually let you adjust the amount of blur after you've taken the photo, as well as turn that portrait mode on and off. So that's how we're gonna fix this photo. If we just go ahead and duplicate this, like so, and then hit edit, it's gonna bring up all of these options. So the first is your light source. It's obviously set to natural light at the moment, but you can change to studio, contour light, and then a couple of other funky options there. I'm just gonna leave it on natural light for this. If we go ahead and hit the f-stop, it's gonna bring up a slider that lets you adjust the amount of blur in the background. Going all the way to the right is going to increase that depth of field and bring a lot more of that background into focus, as well as going the opposite way. It's just gonna give you an extreme bokeh or background blur there. For this particular photo, I'm going to leave it at f2.8. I just feel like that works best for this photo. And then go ahead and hit done when you're finished. We then want to go to the second photo that you've duplicated. We want to turn portrait mode off for this because that's going to bring back a lot of the details in that original photo to help us fix it. So go ahead and hit edit on this one and the portrait button at the very top. Press that. As you can see, all of those details come back in and the background is in focus as well as the, the can there. So once you've done that, hit done and you now have your two versions of the same photo. Now you want to send them over to the computer, whether it's AirDrop, email, Google Drive, all those sorts of things. Get them over to the computer and save them down somewhere together. Once you've saved them somewhere on the computer, you want to make sure that the image with the background blur included in it is selected. Control click, right click, whatever it is you use. Go to open with and then click Adobe Photoshop. Now if you're watching this video, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you haven't used Photoshop too much or that if you've used it at all. Um, but this is the default layout for the Photoshop. As you can see, our image is in here ready to go. It's created a background layer down here. Um, all the tools and everything for Photoshop for you to Photoshop are along the left here. We are only gonna be using the pen tool in this example. So like I said, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. It's just gonna be the pen tool that we have to learn and then um, one basic blur effect as well. So. Very first thing we want to do here is go ahead and unlock this background layers. This little padlock down here, if we go ahead and click that, that's going to let us make changes to that background layer, which we're going to need to do eventually. If you then go back to your other image and drag that one on top of the second one, it's then going to create another layer above the background layer. You can then turn these on and off or toggle them on and off with the little eyeball here. As you can see, when you turn that one off, it'll show the initial photo underneath, turn it back on, it's gonna put the in focus layer uh, back on. If we just turn the top one off for a sec, you can see that the bits that we need to fix in this photo is obviously the bottom of the can, the sides there, and then those pieces in the fingers. So we're basically gonna redraw the shape of the can with the pen tool on the image above, and then delete everything else around it so that that part of the can pulls through to the bottom image. If you turn that back on, we're then going to zoom into the photo. So I'm using a Mac, which is Command, and then plus, plus, plus. Hold down space to click and drag to drag that image around. Now, before we start drawing anything, that second layer, we want to rasterize, rasterize, whatever the hell it's called, that layer. So if you just highlight that second layer, control click, and then go rasterize layer. It's not gonna do anything, but it actually did do something. If you then grab the pen tool, you can click to start making what we call anchor points. Now, one thing that I would suggest with this is staying inside the can a little bit because we're gonna feather those edges slightly. So if you click to make an anchor point, obviously it's gonna make that little square there. 
The very first line that we want to draw is a straight line. So if you just go down to the bottom of the can and then roughly near the bottom, just click again. Now, if you've placed this wrong and you need to move it around, it's not going to let you just click and then drag it it's to where you need it to be. It's going to start creating more anchor points, which is a real pain in the ass. So if you want to move this anchor point around, hold down command. Now you can click and drag it to wherever you need it to be. So like I said, just try and stay inside that can a little bit. Now the next line that we need to draw is obviously not going to be a straight line because if we do that, it's going to cut out a piece of the can there. So to make a curved anchor point, if you just click, drag, click, hold and drag like so, it's going to create a curved line like that. Now, once again, if you've stuffed up and you need to adjust this little curve, you do so by obviously moving these two little legs that are hanging out here. You can't just click and drag them. You need to hold down the option key and then drag it around to be where you need it to be like that. So when I first started using the pen tool, it was a bit of a pain, but when you do get used to it, it is quite easy to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw the rest of the can and then move on to the next step. The other thing is that we don't need to draw the entire can out. It's only going to be this side, the bottom, and then this side, and then you can just join it up like here. You don't have to get too intricate around the fingers or anything like that. So. And once you've got your lovely shape made like so, you then want to turn that into a selection. So if we just go up and click the Make Selection button up here, you then want to feather, change the feather radius to two pixels. So I've obviously already got it at two and then just press okay. So that's now created a selection around what we've drawn or with what we've drawn. As you can see, this little black and white line around the area that we drew. If I went ahead and deleted that, it would delete that part of the image, which is obviously not what we want to do. You want to delete everything else except for that. This may not make sense, but you will see as we go. So we want to invert that selection just by going up to select and then inverse, or you can use the keyboard shortcut. Once you've done that, you'll see that everything except that has now been selected. So obviously the, the outline of the entire image, and then it's got that bit in the middle that you've drawn as well. So now if you go ahead and press delete, it's gonna delete everything else except for that little section. And as you can see, it's pulled that part of the image through to the bottom layer. So you then wanna go and deselect this. So if you just go up to select, deselect or command D on Mac, whatever it is that you do. And you zoom right out, you'll see that the bottom part of the can and the sides now look as they're supposed to. So you can zoom, zoom in nice and close, you can check the edges. It's not perfect around the edges, but you can spend a little bit more time trying to get that right. I think that will suffice for this photo. That's the main part of this tutorial done. Anyway, the next thing that we need to do is basically draw these little shapes inside where the fingers are and then add some blur to them. So. We're finished with the top layer. If you just go down and select the layer underneath, i.e. the background layer. So once you've got that bottom layer selected, you then want to zoom into the area that you now need to draw again. Make sure the pen tool is still selected. Zoom right in on this. Again, when you draw this shape out, try and stay inside the edge of the finger rather than the, the background edge because we're going to feather it again and just blend those two layers together. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Same principles apply as well when you want to move these anchor points around or adjust the uh, curved edges. So the command key to move an anchor point and the option key, hold it down to drag that curve around. So I'm just going to quickly draw this shape out and then we'll get to the next bit. Again, once you've connected up that last anchor point and you've got your shape there, you just want to convert that to a selection by going up to the make selection button. Now, instead of two pixels for the feather radius, we wanna change this just to one and then press okay. As you can see, it's created a selection in that little area between the finger. So we wanna add some blur to that now. So if you just go up to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, I don't know how to say this, that blur there, hit that there. If you adjust this slider, it will let you adjust the amount of blur. So the aim of this is to try and get it to look the same as whatever's going on in the background. So for this particular example, I think 15 pixels actually works quite well. Yep. Once you've done that, hit OK. Now you want to deselect that selection and see what it looks like. So once you go up to select and hit deselect, as you can see, that looks quite nice. Blended quite nicely. There's no edges missing. So the same principle applies to the other two sections with the finger. So I'll just get them done quickly now. 
And now that's all done, that photo looks so much better. The bits that are supposed to be in focus, they're now in focus. The bits that are supposed to be blurry, they're now blurry. And the last thing to do would be to apply a cheeky color edit to the photo. And now it almost looks like it was taken on a professional camera. So guys, now is the perfect time more than ever while we're all sitting around at home to learn things like Photoshop or that backflip that you've always wanted to do. And if this helped you out, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. I will greatly appreciate it and I will speak to you very soon. Peace.